All right, so from Adam Cherry, <clears throat> I got back into playing about a year ago, having not played much since I left school 25 years ago. I joined a local club last September to find myself this year in the final of both the men's and mixed doubles in the cl club summer tournament. Awesome, awesome. Nice job, Adam. Some content on how to warm up quickly would be great. It takes much longer than 10 minutes to feel like I'm hitting well. I tend to start with light, short balls and gradually move to the baseline, but I feel tense for ages and don't have the confidence for about four games or so to properly open up on my shots, especially on my forehand. Totally relate to this, uh, Adam. So I'm going to give you five different keys here to starting off as strongly as possible in every match. And some of these you probably haven't even thought of. And other ones, it's just going to be giving a specific routine to follow. So key number one to starting every match off strong is warm up your mind before your body. This is one maybe you haven't thought about before. Uh, different people, like psychologically and mentally, kind of activate in different ways. And people feel like the most prepared, uh, the most ready. Other, some people need to be really calm and chill and relaxed and kind of, they're kind of best in like a Zen state. And way over on the other end of the spectrum is people who need to be totally hyped up, totally psyched up. And like the higher their energy is, like the better they play. So key number one here, you need to identify, Adam, where are you on that spectrum? And then be really strategic about doing something before your match, whether that's music in your car, maybe podcast episodes, thinking about strategy or like the mental game, maybe an audio book that, that inspires you. There's a reason why you see professional athletes with headphones on all the time, like especially when they're walking out onto the courts or they're walking out onto the field. Maybe they're getting off the, the bus and, and they're like going into the locker room. And you see athletes in all different sports with headphones on, they're mentally trying to put themselves in their most ideal state. And so good performance in a match, totally, it starts with that. And so a recommendation, in case you didn't know, I have an audio podcast. Episode number 252 is Tennis Strategy Cheat Sheet. Maybe you don't want to think about, you know, tactics or like technical stuff, but if you if you like it, like a reminder on how tactically to start off a match, I highly recommend you listen to that episode. But for you, find out for yourself like what routine puts you in the best mental state. Uh, key number two: warm up your body before you warm up your strokes. So you mentioned in your question ten minutes. Well, that means like the actual like warm up, like the match warm up, and you should have been doing something way before then. So for, for me personally, I like to get to whatever the, the venue is, like 30 to 45 minutes ahead of time, ideally an hour. Like I'd like to just kind of sit, like get there, feel like I'm kind of getting incorporated into like the environment, yeah, get a feeling for the courts, get a feeling for spectators, get a feeling for noise, like from a close nearby highway or you know, like whatever, and just kind of get comfortable in my surroundings. And then probably 30 to 45 minutes before your 10 minute warm up. I mean, you could probably do 15 or 20 minutes and, and that's like the least amount of time I'd recommend. Do some kind of dynamic uh, stretching routine. If you don't know what that is or you don't have one, just go to YouTube and do a search for essential tennis warm up. And you'll see a bunch of videos showing like a specific routine. One of them is called something like warm up fast and effective or something like that. But you have to get your blood pumping. You got to get your heart beating. You've, you've got to ideally break a little bit of a sweat before the 10 minute warm up so that your body is activated. And we've already, remember, we've already activated our mind too. So we've activated our mind. We've activated our, our body. Our muscles are going, our heart is going, our, our, our blood is flowing. And then number three, warm up your strokes if possible before the 10 minute warm up. And I totally understand this is, Frankly, it's usually not possible. But a couple ideas to think about. Is there a wall close by? Even if that means stopping like in a parking lot a couple miles away from the club or away from the park or whatever, and you just hit a couple balls against the wall. Like that would be a game changer for you, probably, since you're kind of a slow starter kind of player. Just five minutes of, of hitting against the wall. Ball machine would be fantastic. If you're going to a tournament, then there's other players just sitting around. And maybe there's not a court open, but go out to the parking lot and just hit some like soft, short shots back and forth. Or drop and hit some soft, short shots to yourself. Even if it's just like hitting the ball up and down on your racket 
after you've done your dynamic warm up can totally make the difference in feeling just comfortable with the racket in your hand. And then finally, and this is like really underrated, do some shadow swings with like footwork, like actual, do your split step, move out to the side. You ever see Rafael Nadal like in the tunnel or like uh, in the like behind the scenes area of a tournament? He's like jumping and sprinting and running and like doing shadow swings. You know, now he's way over on that end of the spectrum. But try try something like that. Like you gotta do you gotta do something. It sounds like to get yourself activated and get yourself moving. I'm not saying like you need to be a crazy person like Nadal and be way over on that end of the spectrum, but find something. He doesn't have a partner to hit with back in the tunnel, but he's just moving and, and he's swinging his racket, he's moving his feet, he's he's jumping, he's running. Find something that gets yourself like activated physically. Okay, so uh, so that's number three, is uh, warm up your strokes. So we've warmed up our, our mind, we've warmed up our body, we've warmed up our strokes, even if it's not ideal. And now it's time for the 10 minute warm up. <laughs> so most tennis players, just use the 10 minute warm up, and then they wonder why they're like a slow starter. Well, that's not good enough. We've done three other warm ups before the real warm up. That's the way you should be preparing yourself if you really take your results uh, seriously. So, in the 10 minute warm up, this is really key, this is really crucial. 80% of your attention and focus should be on your opponent and 20% on yourself. Now, if you're a slow starter, then you probably tend to go out there and all of your attention is on yourself about, man, I feel slow, like I'm, my feet feel super heavy, oh man, my swing is so tight, my, my racket's like, my strings are feeling stiff and it's like, it's just all me, 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 me. And you totally ignore what's happening on the other side of the courts. Uh, Warm Up Like Sherlock Holmes is the chapter of, uh, the name of a chapter in my book and it just ba describes basically what I'm going over here, which is that most of your attention should be on your opponent so you can figure out, you can deduce what are their strengths, what are their weaknesses, how is their movement, uh, what strokes are looking a, a little bit off, where are they missing, how are they missing, mentally, like emotionally, are they looking up, are they looking down. As you gather this information, by the end of the warm up, you should have a simple, deadly pattern in mind might be something totally simple, like hit your backhand cross court because their backhand looks totally uncomfortable. If all your attention is on yourself, then you miss that stuff and then you'll get off to a slow start because you're so self infatuated. Like you're so fixated on everything that's happening on your side of the net and you're just kind of waiting to feel good that you never really you never really feel good because everything is just kind of like stuck in self analysis mode and that's not the way that good athletes prepare that's not the way good athletes are focused when they go out there for competition okay so that's number 4 during the 10 minute warm up warm up like Sherlock Holmes and number 5 is simply choose to receive if you win the spin don't start off serving if you feel like you tend to be a slow starter Put that pressure on your opponent. It's totally a no-brainer if you if you tend to start off slow. That basically gives you another five minutes of like warm-up. Like your opponent in singles generally, like you're supposed to hold serve. So no big deal if you lose that first game. And there's not really a true advantage, like statistically, to serving first. Like, yeah, sure, if you hold it's one zero but you still have to break serve in order to win the set. Like whether you win first or second, you still have to break your opponent's serve or you go to a tiebreaker. And so whether or not you're serving first or second, it's, it's, kind, of a, it's kind of a fake advantage, <laughs> to be honest with you. Like it's, it's not a true statistical like advantage. Either way, you gotta get to six first and you have to break serve to do that if you're gonna win by two. So don't overthink that whole thing. Just say, I'll receive. And now boom, you basically just gave yourself an extra five minutes of uh, warm up time. So for those of you who start off slow, number one, warm up your mind first. Number two, then warm up your body. Number three, warm up your strokes, however you can, even if it's not ideal. So we just did three warm ups. Now we get to the real warm up. Spend your real warm up mostly with your focus on your opponent and then choose to receive if you still kind of feel like you're a slow starter. I hope that's a huge help, Adam. I totally understand where you're coming from. 
I am totally on the other end of the spectrum. <laughs> I, I tend to, to start off like with my RPMs like way too high and I have to like calm myself down. And uh, in a, a really pressure like match situation, a lot of times it takes the whole first set or in the past, it's taken me a whole first set just to calm down and relax. <laughs> so I'm on the other end of the spectrum, but I hear this question constantly. So totally understand where you're coming from. 